Hey, good morning, folks. This is Mr. Bergman. Hey, and today I want to do podcast 1.1.4. We're going to be learning about volcanic hazards. There are hazards to a volcano. I bet you didn't know that. <laughs> yes, you did. Volcanic hazards. But today I had a hazards. We're going to talk about airborne debris. So you probably, you know, when a volcano erupts, things get thrown into the air. The question is, what gets thrown into the air? So we're going to talk about that today. Okay. I hit the wrong button. Okay. Hey, the goals of this. I want you to understand why ash affects a much larger area. I want you to define tephra, describe its related hazards, interpret maps and data, understand the explosion is not only a factor that determines death and damage, predict the movement of ash, find the distance from the volcano that's affected, and what are some of the hazards. So that's the uh, focus today. So let's get there. Hey, let's take a look quickly at each activity. So if you've done the activity before the podcast, that's great. If not, that's fine too. In the activity, you're going to learn that each volcano is different. Some are large, some are small. We don't have a wall at our borders, meaning that there are, if a, a volcano erupts in Canada, it might affect the United States. It's not like, um, yeah. Okay, the largest eruption you plotted uh, or will plot is in Wyoming, not very far from where we are here in Colorado. The wind direction in the U.S. generally is from west to east, and that's generally how things flow. Okay, some geo words. Tephra, volcanic bomb, volcanic block, lapilli, and ash. Well, let's just talk about that. Hey, this diagram is probably the most critical diagram. Well, there's a couple, another one too. But this is a critical diagram you'll definitely want to put in your podcast. All right, let's talk about some of these here. First of all, let's talk about the tephra. Basically, when a volcano erupts, a bunch of stuff comes out. All the stuff that comes out is called tephra. The tephra is whatever comes out of the volcano. Well, what kinds of things come out of the tephra, or, or out of the volcano? Well, tephra, of course. Well, there are things called bombs, there's ash, there's blocks, there's lots of different things that come off. And then as it comes up, and you notice, this, notice that here we've got a prevailing wind, so if the wind happens to take this way, this probably is ash right here, it's going to then deposit that stuff and put it somewhere else. You can see how we have a layer right here. All right, so we have lots of things that can come out of a um, here. Okay, let's talk about one at a time. Uh, but let's talk about a volcanic bomb. All right, bomb. Kind of makes sense. A bomb is something that like lands and it's very big. And if you look at this picture, you can see basically it's a big molten piece of rock that flew through the air and landed somewhere else. Hopefully not on your head. Okay, I got the wrong buttons going on here. Here is the actual definition. It's a mass of molten rock. Okay, that's a tephra, right? Because it's that comes out of the volcano, larger than 65 millimeters. That's two and a half inches in diameter formed when a volcano ejects viscous fragments of lava during an eruption. So you can see the cool picture from back here. And this is what it looks like, of course, after it's hardened. That's a volcanic bomb. I think it's kind of cool. All right. What about a volcanic block? What do you notice about, about a volcanic block? That's right. It's bigger. It's bigger than a bomb. I think if this hits you on the head, no, you would be done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, volcanic blocks are fragments of rocks which measure more than 64. See, these are the big ones. Now, just a side note, the big ones are going to travel the least distance because if you think back to our screen back here, if I can get there, the picture of all of the things, um, the blocks will uh, travel the th least distance, right? And then the bombs will travel further because, of course, they're smaller. So the biggest one goes the shortest distance and then the bombs. Okay, if, if you're near a volcanic eruption, yeah, um, and you're close enough to be hit by a block, you're probably going to be uh, destroyed before that. So yeah, so bombs are bigger or smaller than blocks. Okay, okay so here we go. All right, let's do the next one. Now we've got the lapilli. I think that's how you pronounce it, the lapilli. And here we have a lapilli, and lapilli, it has to do, they're between 64 millimeters and uh, 2 millimeters. So the lapilli is even smaller yet. Okay, so they're kind of tiny rocks, or tiny bombs, if you will. Hoo-hoo, there you go. It's, uh, it's a size classification term for the tephra, all right? Um, I want you to say 2 millimeters to 64 milli millimeters. It comes from the Latin, which means little stones, little rocks. Hmm, there you go. Not so hard. So you can copy that down, pause the video and such. And then lastly, there's ash. Ash is the smallest, so it's very small. What do you think? Um, yeah, that would be less than two millimeters. So right here in this picture, these are the big ones, the big ash down here to just a fine, grainy ash. So lots of different things. Here's a cool picture. This is the ash cloud from Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens in Washington State erupted in 1980. In 1980, actually, I lived in um, 
in Oregon, which was um, we had ash on our cars. Um, and so the ash uh, the cloud, you can see uh, right over here, and these little kids are going, oh, my gosh, oh, we have issues. <laughs> uh, we got a problem. Middle of the day, yeah. Okay. Now, here is actually ash um, zoomed in on. Um, very cool um, with microscopes and such. And one thing you notice about it is it's very um, ragged and jagged. Don't think of it like a nice smooth piece of sand, um, even though it sort of has somewhat of that consistency. It's actually very sharp and ragged. It's very dangerous for you to breathe because it's sharp and would ruin your lungs. And actually, it's very different. Now, these are these uh, particular pictures here are pictures from various different um, um, eruptions around the world. And um, basically, it. We're classifying by size, but actually the chemical composition changes based upon the chemistry of the of the rocks that are underneath that particular volcano in that region of the world, and that changes from region to region. So therefore, you're going to have a different chemical composition. We're just classifying them by size, but you could also classify them by their chemicals. And we're not going to talk about that too much, but that's interesting to note that that is another way to look at it. All right, so. What about the distance from the vent? And I've kind of alluded to this, but I bet you can kind of figure this out. The, um, the bombs, I mean, the blocks are first. You can just add to the other diagram. And then we get the bombs. And then we get the lapilli. And lastly, we get the ash. So how far do they travel? Well, you know, it depends on a number of things. How strong is the wind the day that it erupts? If it's a really strong wind, yeah. Another thing is just basically how much stuff comes out of the volcano when it blows up. If it's a lot, it can travel hundreds and hundreds of miles, even thousands of miles. And so um, the ash travels the furthest. Um, and of course, the, the blocks and the bombs and the lapilli travel the least. You know, Depending on the, the bigger they are, the less distance they travel because they're, they're heavier. Yeah. All right. Volcanic ash has big impacts on the world, okay, on human health. We just, I've alluded to this, you breathe this stuff, it's bad, okay, it'll ruin your lungs. So, uh, yeah, don't breathe it if you're near one. Agriculture, uh, if it lands on your uh, crops, it'll cover your crops and kill them. So that's not good either. Impact on buildings, um, depending on the, obviously when those blocks hit your house, it's done. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Okay, uh, but even the ash. The ash, of course, is the one that travels the furthest, and it can cover. When St. Helens erupted, um, they had, in some places, two feet of ash. Um, and it's not like snow that'll melt away or something like that. It is uh, very, very strong. Appliances, a lot of your appliances require like vents and things. When I get this fine, misty stuff, it gets in your appliances, ruins them. Yeah. Communications, a lot of the, the, the especially uh, like uh, telephone poles and this kind of things, uh, they, they'll just be ruined um, as well. Um, power generation, usually power generation requires, uh, uh, they burn things in power generation, they burn uh, different things, and they need to bring oxygen from the air. Well, guess what? If it's filled with ash, it'll ruin your power generation. So uh, volcanic eruptions are pretty bad things. Transportation, uh, if it covers the road in two feet of ash, have a hard time driving, won't you? Uh, yeah, and also you've got engines, and it's going to really ruin, uh, mess up with your infrastructure. Uh, water supply, obviously, it get, if ash gets in your water and you drink it, now you're, you're, you're drinking, eating, slash, uh, yeah, nasty uh, water because it's got that fine uh, stuff that, that will it'll kind of take your guts out. Kinda, I don't know, take it out, but it'll kind of be sharp shards. And wastewater treatment, obviously, if you're trying to treat water, it, it takes a lot of work to get that out of there. All right, here's some cool pictures. Well, not so cool. I don't know what you think. Here's a, a, a cloud of ash. You can see ash clouds. I think this is St. Helens right here. You can see just uh, these cars are ruined. It's actually oftentimes, it depends on the chemical composition, often very caustic as in uh, like, like an acid. It, it'll eat through metal and such like that. So you can see how this, these cars are done. Um, this is somewhere in the Philippines right here. Look at the building that collapsed from the ash cloud. You can just see how thick that is. This is also in the Philippines. And uh, the ash cloud got so big onto the uh, tail of the, of the uh, it, airplane, whatever you call that thing, that it actually tipped it over. And you can even see the corrosive nature of how it ruined. In fact, speaking of the Philippines, I was watching the news just morning as I was exercising, um, and I noticed that there's an interruption in the Philippines right now, and, uh, uh, yeah, happening as we speak. Okay, so why does it affect such a large area? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's because, well, ash has so little weight that it travels with the weather patterns and it can go many many miles so when you or when you or if you've already done the activity you will notice that especially like the uh, eruption of Yellowstone that was affected by like 30 states in the United States uh, it was amazing and even parts of Mexico I think okay now let's uh, uh, take a turn and let's talk about what's called the volcanic explosivity index how cool is that that means how big is the explosion Okay, they actually have a hazard ratings, and so we'll talk about that. Okay, now there's different types of or levels of 
of, uh, of volcanic activities. The first one is Hawaiian. Now, in a Hawaiian one, that is this is like the the the, the least, and then we get harder, which is Stromboli, and I'll, we'll, here we'll go here, and then Vulcanian, and uh, uh, Plinian. And Plinian is when they explode. Saint Helens was actually considered a small Plinian eruption. Let's just talk about this. In a Hawaiian eruption, it's the type of volcanic eruption where lava flows from the vent in a relative gentle, low-level eruption. So these are the lowest-level eruptions on the scale. If you have a scale from you know, 0 to 10, these are the ones. Um, they're effusive eruptions. It usually makes uh, basalt, ballistic, uh, basaltic magmas of low viscosity and low content of gas, high temperatures. These are the ooze volcanoes. They just ooze out. Not very. I mean, they're exciting to watch, but they're not from an explosivity, explosivity index. It's not very high. Okay, 